This is Tom Goki with Orthopedic Educational Services. I wanted to talk today briefly about plantar fasciitis. Plantar fasciitis is defined as an inflammation of the plantar fascia. The plantar fascia has three slips. The central slip is the most often involved in plantar fasciitis and it originates from the medial calcaneal tuberosity and inserts out into the five digits. The primary function of the plantar fascia is to provide support to the longitudinal arches, both medial and lateral. It affects women more than men. We see it a lot in patients who are obese, and we also notice it quite frequently in patients who have had extremes in their activity changes, either more active or less active. Footwear and flexibility also play key factors in, develop, in the development of plantar fasciitis. Briefly to review the anatomy, the plantar fascia inserts here, uh, or I'm sorry, the origin is here in the calcaneal tuberosity. It is a thick fibrous band of tissue that goes out and inserts into primarily the lateral four toes. You can see the Achilles tendon comes down and attaches into the posterior aspect of the calcaneus and the plantar fascia originates from the plantar aspect of the calcaneus and goes out into the toes. Uh, having tight heel cord or a tight Achilles can contribute significantly to the development of plantar fasciitis. Symptoms, patients will have pain with ambulation. Typically they'll present with what we call startup pain, either getting out of bed first thing in the morning or going from a seated position to a standing position after a prolonged time can all uh, initiate symptoms of plantar fasciitis or heel pain. It localizes to the heel region and patients will typically have changes in their gait, either a noticeable limp or they try to walk on their tiptoes to unload that stretching phenomenon that occurs when the foot is put flat onto the floor and stretches the plantar fascia from its insertion into the calcaneal tuberosity. On examination, a good foot examination is always warranted, paying particular attention to flexibility in both the knee bent and knee extended position for the Achilles as well as the toe flexor group. Palpation of the plantar fat pad as well as the plantar insertion of the plantar fascia into the calcaneal tuberosity. Always looking for vascular and neurologic origins for heel pain and then also assessing someone's gait. X-rays, a, a standing lateral view is important. It'll show several things. Number one, you'll notice frequently that they'll have traction spurs at the origin of the plantar fascia in the calcaneal tuberosity. That's a normal finding. Keep in mind that traction spur as a result of microfracture of the tendon there into the bone and having calcium deposits as a result of that. That is not the cause of someone's plantar fasciitis. It is a byproduct of having traction spur, attraction placed on the tendon causing calcific deposits as a result of bleeding. Uh, also have a high suspicion for patients who have calcaneal stress fracture with prolonged pain in their heel without r relief of symptoms either with or without conservative care. Also look for tumors uh, or bone cysts in the calcaneus that also can contribute to persistent calcaneal pain. In any patient that I plan on giving a corticosteroid injection and I usually exhaust all of my conservative measures and allow three to four months to go by before I would consider a corticosteroid injection for plantar fasciitis, I will always get an advanced study, either a CT scan or an MRI to uh, further, uh, further help me diagnose inflammatory processes going on at the insertion point or the origin point of the plantar fascia here at the calcaneal tuberosity. It is definitely not a good idea to introduce corticosteroids either into a bone tumor of unknown origin or into a uh, stress fracture. Both of those will significantly impede bone healing. Other associated conditions to be aware of, tarsal tunnel syndrome or, or uh, plantar nerve entrapment. Again, we talked about stress fractures and bone tumors. Sometimes patients will present with persistent heel pain as a result of a rupture of their plantar fascia. And lastly, uh, isolated pain in the heel may be uh, a byproduct of having some type of lumbar radiculopathy. Remember, patients don't always have to present with back pain to have lumbar radiculopathy. Treatment options. Treatment here is primarily conservative, aggressive flexibility uh, exercises for the Achilles and the plantar fascia, 
non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications and ice uh, are all important factors in a conservative program. I like to instruct patients in taking a plastic bottle, filling it with water, freezing it and making it a popsicle so to speak and then having them to massage uh, and roll this on the plantar aspect of their foot. It accomplishes two things. Number one, it provides ice to reduce inflammation and it also helps to massage and help stretch the plantar fascial region. Heel pads are also good cushions to help provide uh, support when stepping and walking, whether it's in exercise shoes or in everyday walk around shoes. Good cushioned heel uh, footwear uh, with uh, good arch support, a night splint for recalcitrant uh, uh, forms of plantar fasciitis that are not uh, responding well to active stretching. Uh, again, injection is my next to last option and certainly referral for surgical consultation is uh, a last resort after patients have failed conservative care for at least uh, six months in my opinion. So in conclusion for plantar fasciitis, uh, I, plantar fasciitis to me falls in what I consider to be a nuisance category. It's painful for the patient, it's uncomfortable, it takes a while, and sometimes it's stubborn to uh, respond to treatment, but patients will get better as time goes on. I see it more in women than in men, and uh, usually in patients who have had big changes in their activity. Someone who is starting to train or run for a marathon or, change, or changes their activity levels rather aggressively, or those people who are active and now become sedentary for some reason, either for travel, vacation, or some other medical condition, uh, plantar fasciitis can be a problem for them as well. Conservative care is the hallmark of treatment. Stretching, 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 ice, anti-inflammatory medications, good cushion footwear, heel cushions, arch supports are all keys to helping patients get over plantar fasciitis. And for those people who have persistent heel pain of four weeks or greater that are not responding appropriately to conservative measures, I would consider an advanced imaging study beyond plain x-ray, either a CT or MRI, to further assess whether or not these patients may have stress fracture or some other type of bony abnormality. For Orthopedic Educational Services, until next time, have a great day. This is Tom Gokey.